this. Okay, there we go. So okay. that should be, yeah, all right. We will start all over. Uh, we'll start we again. He said, welcome. <coughs> uh, we said welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're coming to you live from uh, beautiful Shanghai. Yep, and today's bits and pieces we have for you. We're going to be playing some Alice. Uh, we're going to be answering some chat, which is when I look over here. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about the Kickstarter, uh, Out of the Woods, mm -hmm. which had a great night. And we're going to be playing some Out of the Woods. That we are. Yeah. yeah, we kind of rebuilt our little um, studio here. Uh, I think I had mentioned before that we wanted to play the card game, uh, but we couldn't because the table, the sort of surface that we're, we're working from here was too small. Originally, it was cardboard boxes. It and was. And it actually fell over during one of the first streams, and then we upgraded to a slightly larger table, um, but not big enough to play the game. And uh, yep. now we've got a bigger table, so all of our stuff is spread out here. It looks quite professional. It is actually. It's looking pretty it's looking good. It's looking pretty good, I know. Uh, right, so what are we going to look at okay. first? How about we take a look at the Kickstarter? Because as Martin mentioned, last night we had an amazing night. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but it, it really took off overnight. So um, we are looking here at the Out of the Woods Kickstarter page. Um, we are now up to $199,754. Wow. We are just that... <laughs> Close to the Very second close. stretch goal. Um, so, did we just hit the first stretch goal yesterday? It was yesterday morning. It was. That's a yeah. big. That's a big jump. According to Kick Track, we've already had an uh, eleven thousand k day, yeah. and there's still three hours to go. So something awesome happened last night. Don't know what many it was. of you guys yeah. pledging. That, that's the awesome thing. Yeah, but... or are you guys promoting or. I don't know. Maybe all of this Pickle Rick stuff. People maybe. seem to really like the Pickle Rick thing. Could be Jennifer's art. I know she's been spreading that around. Yeah. And uh, that stuff's turned out really cool. Well, anyway, so the campaign, yeah, nearly at $200,000. Um, we did hit our first stretch goal, which is the play mat slash scarf. There's been a little bit of controversy over that because uh, it seems that the concept of a traditional card game play mat uh, is maybe one that's made out of neoprene sort of like a mouse pad, whereas we had been touting this from the beginning as a sort of scarf, uh, traditional scarf, uh, that you might wear around your neck or wear as a bandana. But anyway, we've been showing this sort of piece of material, this sort of silky thing for a while, uh, and that, it turns out, is not necessarily what people want or think of when they think of a play mat. Anyway, so we're going to try to see if we can't maybe get both made over the head. There you go. It'll cover My your head's too slippy. Yeah, exactly. It'll cover your shiny spot. Um, anyway, we're going to see if we can't get both made. And um, if not, then we'll stick with the original matte design. This this mat, this design, the scarf design, sorry. Um, but anyway, main thing is, awesome. We hit the, um, the goal. We, we did. Yeah. And so now the second stretch goal is going to be... Something, the props. something akin to this. Yeah. This is kind of like a little certificate that you get. This is for when you buy anything from Mysterious. But it's going to be very similar in design and style and awesomeness to this. It'll be uh, Alex Crowley. He's the one who designed this. He's also the one who did a lot of the il illustrations for the website uh, and for the card borders and things like that. So he would do another one of these. Okay. And so, yeah, for every person who's backed the project at the f any physical reward level, as soon as we hit this second stretch goal, then you can expect the box containing your card game and your book, or your card game and book, um, to arrive with the scarf and the collector card. Mm -hmm. That way everybody gets something autographed. I know a lot of people were interested in that. So, yeah. um, that makes it easier for me because I can just have all the cards at home and sign them, and then we can stick them in the boxes and send them <clears> off. So. Yep. Yeah, good plan. All right. So yeah, maybe we'll hit stretch goal two as we're streaming. I think we might. Yeah, 246. Yeah, almost no. there. Yeah. All right, so um, I don't know if there's anything else to talk about with Out of the Woods. Yeah, stretch Not really, goals. just go go to the webpage, have a look, yeah. give us a pledge if you like what you see. Spread the word, all that kind of good stuff. All right, <clears throat> let's go die some more. Um, apparently, I've been playing my own game all wrong. It's, it's quite funny. I've been reading people in the comments who are saying... Don't forget to upgrade your <clears throat> weapons or stop playing like an idiot. You know, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Um, but we're going to pick up where we left off, which was 
Uh, we'd left the Mad Hatter's domain after multiple deaths at the hands of the teapots, or I guess the claws of the teapots. Claws. Yeah. And the baby fire flingers. Yeah, and, um, oh yeah, this this drawing that we were showing on the webpage uh, thingy before, <coughs> that's from a guy in the uh, chat here called Wolf Pie, and uh, he had done that and shared it with me on Twitter. I did ask your permission if I could use that, but I don't know if I saw a response, so uh, please. The Alice Picklerick pick. Yes, right. I, like, I thought that was quite cute. It was quite uh, yeah, cute. It was good. Um, <coughs> anyway, so back into Madness Returns today, uh, we are going to be out of the Thames and into the fire. <laughs> And um, hopefully I won't be dying as much this time, well. because we are going to spend a little bit of time to upgrade weapons. <clears throat> uh, what was the other thing I was I was being told to Use do? Use the flowers for health longer? Ah, right. Stick around inside the flowers in order to recharge health. So, mm. duh. <laughs> anyway. Um, right. Right. And yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat. We've been answering a lot of the same questions in the live streams, so I'm going to keep an eye out for particularly interesting and new and unique questions. Uh, let us know if you can hear the sound from the game and if it's too loud, because it's uh, I can hear it, but I don't know if you can hear it. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, quadruple mm. jump I need to remember as well. <laughs> quadruple jump is a bit odd as a design choice. Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> um, I don't suppose there's any weapon upgrading when you're in London, so you just have to wait for that. Uh, somebody's asking the um, question about what influenced you in making Alice as dark as she is? Um, this, this question has come up in the past, and it's sort of a combination of my own personal style. Like when I was in uh, high school, I was a goth kid. Of course, I also played flute, so it was a little bit of a... Anyway. Mm. Um, the game may have no volume. No. Let's have a look at the sound. Go here. See? Look at that. It's showing uh, nothing. I think whenever you restart, um, you end up with uh, these settings getting broken, <laughs> and then you have to start all over again. Bear um, with us. Technical difficulties. You'd expect to see none, that. Start. None of those audio options did anything no. to the game. Uh, use device timestamps, what does that mean? <laughs> So bizarre. This all works before we start, usually. It, you, uh, it really does. We're, we're not that <laughs> terrible. We we're actually do sorry. test everything before we start <laughs> streaming to you guys. Honest, governor. And it all is working, and then we come in here and start the stream, and it's like, I, it's Gremlins. I think it's Lulu. I think Lulu <laughs> Maybe. comes... Maybe. I think Lulu is, um, is coming in here, and she's nibbling on the wires. So, um, let's see here. <clears throat> that would be audio output, right? We want to capture audio output. I think that's what we used before. Yeah, and we were doing um, speakers, right? Let's try. Look, it's just not, but I think we have to, ah, there it is. Oh, okay. yes. It's this whole thing with, all right, so we got the sound back. Uh, you will want to right. comment on levels. If it's yes. too loud, I can turn it down a little bit. Tell us. Sorry about that. So yeah, you were saying the what inspired the darkness of Alice. Um, yeah, I mean, it's sort of it just a lot of things. My own personal experience as a child um, obviously led to a lot of the narrative uh, content in the game, sort of inspiration for that. Uh, and then, as I was saying, I was, you know, goth kid when I was in school, and I uh, tended to listen to sort of music in the genre and I, I, yeah so when it came my turn to make a game I was asked to make a game I um, sort of just melded all that stuff together uh, can we knock the game sound down like 20% or something yes we can do that how is that <clears throat> let us know if that sounds better yep should be much more quiet now <laughs> Um, do we have any more plans with Out of the Woods outside of the cards? Figures, art, animations, digital version. 
We do. Uh, we have been speaking uh, to one of our old buddies about a potential digital version. Um, but this comes with its own little things that you need to consider, such as keeping servers live and whatnot and uh, supporting it. So it is uh, it's a little bit of a bigger decision. And yeah, we are still hoping to keep Out of the Woods going in the future as a franchise, hopefully, with like new games and new art and new explorations of uh, different fairy tales and whatnot. Is this something that you guys do in the UK? You just sit around out in the rain? Yeah. I, I don't... I mean, I know it rains there a lot, <laughs> but these people all just seem so not bothered by the fact that they're getting completely drenched. It's because we're tough. Uh, maybe it's because you're just not that smart. <laughs> I, these guys, I don't get it. We're hardy. Man, I guess so. <laughs> Get those fat -ass tools out Nothing wrong with a bit of a rainstorm. <laughs> this is our uh, brick top here. It was inspired by the character in Snatch, whose name you and I were trying to figure out the other day, but I forgot yeah, what that was. You know. <clears throat> I thought it was Copper Top. But uh, I don't think he's Copper Top. I'm pretty sure that in Snatch, the guy's a brick top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what have we got? Did you write or influence any of the <laughs> script for this game, or were you mainly part of the overarching story? Uh, all of it. So, uh, we before production actually began on the game, uh, I started work on a massive wall full of notes, uh, note cards, and the note cards contained um, a growing outline of the story. And it went scene by scene, location by location, character by character. Um, and what, when it was sort of at its peak, uh, it got to be something like six feet tall by probably 15 feet <coughs> wide of, of cards and scenes. And I was sort of uh, taping it off like into different scenes and things like that. Um, and so... Then the art guys came in and started moving stuff around and talking about color theory and how to make the game sort of pop off the screen by having certain sections of the game appear in certain orders. Um, we started talking about technical limitations um, that would also influence which direction we went, what we did, what we showed to the player and when. Um, and then RJ and I started working on the story, actual dialogue. Uh, we, we would go in and write script. Um, so, f say for instance, like the introduction scene with um, Dr. Bumby and the rabbit in the boat. Um, I wrote most of that, and then RJ would write the, the next blob of stuff, and then I would edit, or he would edit something I'd written. So it was very much back and forth between myself and RJ on the, uh, on the dialogue. Um, but the, the overarching story, though, uh, came to life on the massive... Um, sort of note board, note note card storyboard that I, I would build, and that process took months, um, it was months and months of working on that. Sounds it. Okay, someone keeps beeping my phone here, so. Okay. Um. What do you think of the Alice books written by Christina Henry, if you've read them? Never heard of them, but I think that this name came up the other day when we, we were doing a stream. And it? Um, I can remember the sort of Swedish-sounding film Alice name. That's the Jan Svankmiker, or whatever his name right. was. Uh, I think that this is in reference to, obviously, a series of books, um, which I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, some of these questions are simply, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> Um, what do we want to do here? So we want to upgrade. Yeah. And then we want to upgrade this thing. Do not, not have... enough teeth. Oh, come <clears throat> on. What happened? You're like a hundred short. Uh, I guess that's it, huh? I guess so. Well, we'll just get some more teeth. I, I would have thought since I hadn't upgraded at all that I would have had like a <laughs> massive number of uh, teeth to work with there. Apparently not. Apparently not. Uh, what do you think of last night's Rick and Morty? Ah, oh, it was awesome. It was so good. Well, that's why this uh, stream is titled what it is. The uh, You Will Die Like in Saw. Uh, yeah, it was really, really good. It was a good one. Yeah, and I mean, Martin and I have been talking about this sort of controversy that's uh, surrounding the idea that they've got women writers 
on the project. And I, I mean, I didn't even think, like, I don't follow the creation of the show or the creators well enough to even know that this is a thing. But then I noticed that on Twitter, uh, Dan Harmon had decided to quit Twitter for a week over, I guess, the backlash that he was getting. Uh, and so, yeah, I, you know, I thought that the scene that people were complaining about with the psychologist was actually brilliant. Um, yeah, I thought it was, you know, I thought her dialogue was spot on, and uh, I didn't think that it detracted in any way from um, sort of what I've come to expect when, when watching one of those. But, yeah, who knows? Who knows? But last night's episode, I thought, you know, sort of firmly returned to the sort of political correctness and, and taking digs at political correctness that we've come to expect from the show. And I, Martin and I had this, this thought, I mean, maybe they're smart enough, the writers, um, I mean, obviously they're very smart, but they're smart enough to manufacture this kind of controversy. Mm -hmm. um, they know that, say, for instance, that episode, um, or maybe the first episode was going to be, what was the one where they, they sort of... Um, First episode. Of well, the it was the Mad, yeah, it was the Mad Max thing. That was the second episode. Oh, second, second episode. And then, but you said something like, "Well, you were worried they were all going to end up being uh, sort of riffs on existing films." Yeah. And and then you know what do they do next? They do Pickle Rick, which could <laughs> which could not be more original. Um, so I, you know, I, I was sitting there kind of thinking like, same same concept that we have with the. Um, Sort of color theory that you know if you show somebody something really vividly blue and then you switch to red it's going to seem that much more red and so maybe this was part of their plan all along maybe they knew they had a gem with pickle rick so they had a slightly poorer one beforehand could, could be or or they just decided to make the one before that sort of more standard knowing that the second one was going to be that much weirder right <laughs> did i just die you did you were doing quite well I wasn't really paying uh, attention. I was too busy on Rick, Rick and Morty theory. <laughs> uh, yeah. I asked you the question last night who your favorite Vindicator was. Rick. You said you hated them all. <laughs> I hated them all. <laughs> I, I wanted them all to die. They were all such cliches. They all needed to die. I like I liked Million Ants and uh, Alan Rails. Just because Alan Rails was voiced by Lance Henrik. Uh, Is that who that was? Yeah, well, that was him. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because, um, so the, the sort of standard uh, hero, superhero voice, that was... Um, Christian Slater. Christian Slater, who I love. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's great. And what's he's in um, that Mr. Robot show that's Mr. really Robot. good. Yeah. yeah, I love him. And he's also done some voices on other cartoons, like on uh, Archer. He played, a, uh, he played sort of a, a CIA drug bad guy thingy. Right. He, was, he was really good in that as well. Okay. Oh, you better watch Archer. I, I actually started watching Moonbeam City again oh, yeah. last night because people say that's like Archer. Uh, still, still good, good fun. Right. Uh, maybe I'll bring it along and check it out one day. Let's get back to some questions. Ooh, someone... Uh, how was yesterday's live stream with Halloween? Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Um, you know, I'm really getting into this. I, I'm finding that the whole live streaming uh, sort of business or the activity, whatever you want to call it, is actually really enjoyable. We've been having a lot of fun sat in here playing. Yeah. And um, then joining these other live streamers and interacting with their audiences. Uh, I mean, that's the really cool part about it is the audience interaction. Uh, so, yeah, I think yesterday's stream was really fun. He's got a good sense of humor. Um, you know, it was like when I was on with Minx also, you know, she was really fun to interact with, her audience is really fun, so, it's great. Though it seems like I got Halloween in some trouble because he mentioned that his girlfriend is older than he is. And then she took, she took to Twitter to make sure everyone knew, knows that that doesn't mean she's an old hag. <laughs> no. Uh. <laughs> Uh, when you finished writing the first Alice, did you always want a sequel, or should it have been left on its own? Um, yeah, no, I think when we finished the first, uh, we already had an idea that there was going, there, there was the possibility of, of more. Um, so, you know, it's, it's always been there that it, it could be a series, and actually very early on, uh, RJ and I had presented TEA the idea 
that um, we could do a sort of fairy tale series based on a lot of different uh, stories, and we we hoped that EA was was going to be willing to support us to put out a series of fairy tale based games, um, including uh, more Alice stuff. This guy's pretty funny, the Yeti. <laughs> He's very just random. Well done for uh, killing that thing, though. Yeah, well. That's pretty yeah. gory. What's that all about? Oops. What are you doing there? <laughs> um. Yeah, we, we thought uh, EA would be a good home for kind of a, a fairy tale um, series. And... Um, there were people there that were fans of the idea, um, but somehow they just, uh, when we finished Alice, they decided because it was so, at that time, violent, uh, and it was their first M-rated title, uh, there were some people that were upset about it, and they wanted to see some heads roll, and so um, I took off to India for two weeks, and while I was gone, they, uh, they fired RJ, so that wasn't no. good. Not good. Oh, no! Should have waited. Uh, it was an intentional death meant to amplify the uh, the whole fact that they fired RJ. Was it? Yeah, no. <clears throat> See, okay. I said it again and I died again. <laughs> Every time you say fired RJ, I have to Alice die. has to die. Exactly. There you go. Okay, maybe I'll stop doing that. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite voice actor? Uh, in the world or like... Uh, the question has scrolled past now. I don't think they specified. Well, maybe do both. Alice and the world. Uh, well, in the world, I quite like... Um, what's his name from The Simpsons? And he does a lot of different voices. Uh, Hank... Uh, uh, Azaria. Azaria. I really, really like him. <laughs> um, and then I like the guy you know, who does the Archer voice, because he's also Bob's Burgers. That's uh, Chris Parnell. He's, he's great. And he's been in some of the... Rick and Morty's as well mm -hmm. um, and then um, I don't know inside of Alice uh, for sure it would be I mean so I know a lot of the voice actors that have done voice acting for Alice I don't want to say one is a favorite and one is not because um, they might be listening and then be upset but um, ah, my phone um, but I'm always impressed by the amount of work a number of voices that Roger Jackson can do because um, of course he's the <coughs> voice of the Cheshire Cat but then he's also the voice of many other characters uh, in the game and if you look at his list of credits for the game uh, it's pretty impressive so okay I've seen a, a couple of questions scroll by about other lands like what was the inspiration for that and getting Alice into other people's minds well the, the sort of the journey itself um, was one where in the first game, so if you like, if you watch the Matrix trilogy, uh, that is the sort of classic hero's journey um, in the Joseph Campbell style. And so if you look at like the Matrix, or you look at Star Wars, um, they all model themselves on this traditional hero's journey uh, in which in the first chapter, it's very, it's very often that the the character um, will master one domain, so say the physical domain um, or the psychological domain, and then in the next chapter, uh, that character will will master the second domain, and then in the third chapter, the character brings the two two the two domains together. Um, so you know, in the Star Wars trilogies, it might have been that like Luke uh, mastered the Force, but then also. Um, you know, gained mastery of, uh, of his emotions and of the lightsaber, and so there were different tools and different domains that he had to master um, in order for him to overcome the ultimate obstacle. So, in the Alice series, um, what happens is that in the first game, she fights her, her psychological demons um, as they relate to her being in the asylum, and she manages to free herself psychologically. So she's fighting literally her own emotions in the first game. She's fighting anger, rage, guilt, sadness. Um, in this second game she's actually fighting how do you deploy that thing again the uh where is it i gotta find the button come on button there it is okay um so in the second game um we all know now that she's actually fighting an external uh bad guy it's not she's fighting herself but she's fighting the damage being wrought upon her psychology by 
uh, Dr. Bumby, and so Bumby, of course, has has set this uh, this infernal train to work inside of Alice's mind in an attempt to corrupt or destroy her memories so she'll forget about the events of the past. So, this time around, she's having to use her powers to actually fight an external enemy, and that's what she's doing as she travels through Wonderland and London. And if you got to other lands, the idea was that you're actually combining together the two. She's combining together her ability to uh, perform her magic and her abilities inside the space of Wonderland with also being able to do those things in the real world and in the minds of other people. So it's a very long-winded way of saying that it's a three-part structure moving from her fighting her personal demons to fighting uh, an external bad guy to then combining her ability to, to manifest Wonderland internally and externally and then there you get you get other lands. So, okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, don't ask these questions if you don't want long answers. <laughs> <coughs> uh, somebody here says Archer was H. John Benjamin. Oh, right. Sorry. Not, not Chris Parnell. Not Chris Parnell. Mm. Sorry. Sorry. There you go. Learn something new every day. Well, just say something wrong every day. <laughs> uh, is there meaning behind the butterflies when Alice dies? Um. Yeah, they're just she's dead. There you go. <laughs> I, I understand the Nothing question though. Um, rebirth. Something. Um, no, I mean, I'm trying to think if we had some sort of. I think there is some sort of of meaning um, related to butterflies. I just can't exactly recall what it is. So, you know, it was a while ago. It was. I'm sure if we looked it up, the meaning of butterflies in dreams, we'd probably find uh, that there's there's something going on there. Uh, but I'm, I'm spacing it right now. Uh, can you tell something about the asylum sequence from the sequel? Is it only Alice's memory, or did she revisit the place? Oh, right, because it's sort of a mixed reality. Yeah, no, it's, um, that's sort of a nightmare. Uh, it's not meant to, it's not meant to be that she's actually going back to the asylum. Um, the, well, the, and again, this is one of those things where we did design a kind of overlaid map of this adventure, um, that had, had her actually sort of getting close to the physical places related to the scenes, um, you know, so there's always a bit of sort of overlap in, in what's going on in Wonderland and then the location she's in, uh, you know, in, in London. Um, but I've said before, this idea of whether or not she's sort of really walking through London and then experiencing this stuff and like maybe killing people in London or not, we, we sort of wanted to intentionally leave fuzzy. Um, so, yes, those clues are there. No, we don't really want to... Don't want to put too fine a point on exactly what's going on. Mm. <clears throat> Woohoo! Any possibility of an original Alice livestream playthrough? Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to do an original Alice playthrough, and I also want to do Bad Day LA. <laughs> so I've got to get a copy of that. Um, I just feel Bad Day LA would be excellent right now, given how much sort of political, you know, tension there is in the U.S. Um, because it was a game that was built originally as a sort of send-up to what was going on in the in U.S. politics, you know, what, 13, 14, 13, 12 years ago. And um, so it, it was meant to bring some levity to what I felt like was a kind of a situation that was getting too, uh, way too serious. And um, it would be fun to go back and play that again. Mm. Maybe get in trouble for being politically incorrect. Because, I mean, people are just so <laughs> much more bent up about political correctness these days that I, I'm kind of curious if like, I wouldn't get maybe banned from YouTube or something for playing <laughs> that. Yeah, might be worth seeing if anyone else has done a bad day LA. I have, I've, yeah, I've seen, I've seen recently. Um, yeah, there's one. There's, they're not that, um, they're not that many, but there, there's been a few. And you know, what's always struck me is that, like, removed from the context of knowing 
sort of anything about me and knowing the expectations that were on the game because it was the it was the second game it was the first game I did after uh, Alice um, these people playing it are having a really good time and they're they're laughing and they're they're sort of taking it for what it is which is which is ow um, yeah they're sort of taking it for just being a bunch of nonsense fun like a low budget silly game. And but you know when the when the sort of professional reviewers got their hands on it, they were um, angered by the fact that it wasn't living up to the expectations they had for whatever my next game was going to be. And so, um, uh -oh. here we go. Um, so yeah, watching people play it who don't have those sorts of expectations um, makes it a lot more fun. Uh, I, I think for them and for me. And. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see uh, how it kind of stands up and, and what it looks like these days. So there you go. Bad day, uh, LA. Live stream coming soon. Well, and I think <laughs> Alice an Alice One live stream as well would be good. I mean, we've got this whole setup in here now. Might as well uh, uh, use it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, apparently, according to Google. Dreaming of the beautiful butterfly represents a time of change. But you're going through some type of transition. There you go. There you go. That would be why we did that. Yep. Changing from alive to dead. Yeah. Back again. Yeah. Everything does have its meaning. It's just that I don't always remember exactly what all those meanings were. <laughs> um. We've got a question about the possibility of Alice being VR, mobile, or episodic. How much more doable is an episodic game compared to uh, normal? Well, uh, I've been trying to figure out how we would get a new Alice financed because um, I don't think it's going to be the case that we can convince EA to just outright pay for a new Alice game. Um, but, you know, there is crowdfunding, except that the problem with crowdfunding is we might be lucky to raise like a million or two dollars. And this is why I went to Twitter the other day and was asking about mobile VR or um, episodic. That is because I could imagine that we might be able to set up a small studio to produce a series of episodic Welcome games on a Here's sort of non-fixed schedule is the queen of hearts, like a tank and queen. have that funded via crowd funding but have the funding go on and on and on it's, as opposed to just one Kickstarter and then it's over um, maybe we would have because Martin and I've been talking about we'd have like a uh, an online Wonderland shop mm -hmm. containing little Cheshire cat figurines and artwork and all sorts of stuff so um, in fact my question to EA about making this work wouldn't just be hey can we go and crowdfund this but it would be can I please sell collectible items that the bat that the the fans then purchase as a way of funding the creation of more and more episodes. Um, so that's something we want to look into. That was why that question came up. Um, yeah. Yep. You never um, cease to amaze. Why wasn't Elizabeth more of a point of grief in the first game? Her death was something, something scrolled past the question. Well, in the, you know, remember in the first game, Alice uh, was suffering from a sort of survivor's guilt, and she wasn't aware of the fact that, um, you know, that it had been a murder. Um, she she didn't know that, and you know, in, in the first game, what she recalled was that the cat had knocked over the lamp. But of course, in this game, we then discovered that that's not exactly what took place. Um, she was suffering tremendous psychological pain and damage that's why she was in a, an insane asylum and it was why she was for so many years uh, in a catatonic state and not really reachable by anyone from the outside world um, so I, I don't know I mean I thought we represented pretty clearly that she was <laughs> not having a great time and that she uh, she definitely was was affected very negatively by uh, this experience. I'm, I'm not sure uh, what else we could have done to uh, to communicate that. Uh, can you talk any more, roughly, about the ideas that you had for the Alice Asylum prequel? 
Um, it's. I mean, it's it's so early right now, but um, you know, the the main idea is that let's go back and find Alice uh, while she's still sort of maybe thirteen years old, and um, she's still in the asylum, and she's kind of in and out of this. All uh, oh, right, you can bash them on the head when they're like this, can't you? Um, so she's kind of in and out of consciousness, and then the question would be, what are you supposed to do, whack them? Isn't it like whack-a-mole? Um, there we go. Um, yeah, so we would be seeing what it was that was going on in her mind while she was in that catatonic state. Uh, and I think there could be quite a lot of interesting things to do and see. Look, I'm using it correctly this time. You are. Yeah. Well done. Um, yeah, I mean, I think seeing her go into various places in Wonderland um, and then play through sort of more puzzle room-like experiences, also some combat. We, we were talking about this yesterday on the Halloween stream, which is that I think in a lot of ways this game, Alice, uh, Madness Returns, is really too big. Um, especially it's too big if we were going to try to recreate this uh, with a smaller budget or a smaller team. There's just no way. But... Um, if we broke the game up into little chunks and we made it all about puzzle rooms and it was sort of areas of Wonderland that perhaps we'd never visited before, um, I could imagine we could go and see some pretty interesting and fun stuff. And also enabling that to be um, sort of VR uh, powered. You know, it wouldn't have to be that you'd have to use it with VR, but having it where, you know, VR um, definitely worked, um, that would be pretty cool as well. Mm. Mm. How good can you guys speak Chinese? Me? Not very good at all. <laughs> kind of functional for ordering food in restaurants and just basic, hello, how are you, where's this, where's that. American is pretty fluent. <laughs> How long have you been living here? Seven years? Seven years. 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 Well, we've been taught that we can break these, and now we're being told that no, you cannot. Hmm. Maybe it needs upgrading or something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you're supposed to be in uh, sort of uh, hysteria mode when you try to attack those or something. Maybe. There he is. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. Oh, no. Uh, not the sharks. You better come aboard, Alice. <laughs> we doomed, of course. What? There's no hope for you. <laughs> Buddy. Uh, right, uh, uh, yes, if you donate just a little bit to the Out of the Woods Kickstarter, you will get the link to the about 350 megs worth of Alice design type documents. It's for every backer. So once the project is finished, in three days, there will be a backer-only update to the Kickstarter page, which will have the link to the design uh, documents. Yeah, there's some cool stuff in there too. Um, design documents, art documents, um, animatics, so like the scene we're watching right now, there are the rough um, early versions of these in there, and uh, I've shared some of those on YouTube already, but um, there's a couple more that have not been shared, and so those would be exclusive to this package. Side scroller time. <laughs> Could there be a possibility of a scrapland stream in the future? Uh, yeah, I could do. Um, you know, that wasn't my design. Um, I helped those guys out mostly with uh, marketing, and I did a little bit of sort of post-production stuff with them. But um, yeah, it was a really good game. I think it was uh, hugely underrated. Um, but uh, it was really fun working with uh, the guys at Mercury, Ste Mercury Steam. And um, it seems like there's a lot of people out there that are, that are still really big fans of it. Uh. What would an older Alice be like? 
like 20 years older. She'd be 20 years older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how old is she? In like the end of Madness Returns. Oh no. See, Martin, why would you ask me that? Now I'm gonna sound <laughs> stupid. Um, um, she's. I think she's 20 something by the time we see her in here in Madness Returns. Um, uh, there, there is a whole system of, of dates and whatnot. I just can't remember everything off the top of my head right now. But we did try to keep everything sort of making sense in terms of the date of the fire and the age of the real Alice um, in the real world versus in the game and then the years that she would have been in the asylum and stuff like that. So um, it is there is a proper timeline and it all does make sense, but um, I just can't remember it off the top of my head right now. But thanks for making me look stupid about my own game. Appreciate that. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually doing a pretty good job making myself look stupid about my own game, so... <laughs> I think people will forgive you. It's been a while. It has been a very long time. Um... Right. Odd one. Have you ever imagined it possible to get a lot of people to like the Alice game? I think a lot of people already like the Alice game. I'm not sure I understand that question. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If, if there's more to that question, please ask. <laughs> this uh, Krasen character is really keen on knowing which model you prefer for the Alice Madness Returns. The one from the Alice 2 March trailer with the dresses changing on your weapon or the one from the final game? I don't know. Um, it three times in a row. <laughs> Alice Wild Trains, the one from the Marsh. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we, well, I mean, we, we did that in the um, demo trailer because you weren't able to travel through all the domains and see all of the dresses. Um, so we needed a way to logically show off all of the dresses in the trailer without traveling to all the different places. Um, now what we ended up doing in the game is what we had designed from the beginning to do. So it wasn't really a question of preference. The way you see it in the game is the way it's supposed to be, and the way that it was shown in the demo was that way again just so we could go through and show off all the dresses. So the, you know, the game has its purpose and the demo, demo had its purpose. Oh. Apparently, we're less than a hundred dollars away from two hundred thousand on Out of the Woods. Awesome, almost there. We can't, we can't actually see that number from where we are. Yeah, we can. Uh, well, not yet. There we go. Nine three nine. Ooh, cool. So what's that? Sixty-one dollars away. Yeah, almost exciting. There. And then we're going to have unlocked a new uh, stretch goal. Yep, Tell the uh. About the train. Yeah, I'll just show that up again later. Uh, Andrew's asking if we have any 3D printed items uh, from the Alice games. Actually, I have done some stuff here at home uh, where I've got a workshop with like a CNC machine and I've got a 3D printer and a bunch of other. I've got a laser cutter. Um, and so we use a lot of that stuff when prototyping or thinking about products for Mysterious. Uh, and I have been thinking more and more about, again, if we went to crowdfunding fund a new Alice game, um, could we include 3D, you know, proper items, collectible items, toys, or uh, figurines, or other types of jewelry, um, as something that, that people would come and purchase um, as collector's items, and then by doing that, they're helping to support the creation of the new game. Um, of course, if that meant that I could buy like a really high-end 3D <laughs> printer to have at home and then do those myself, um, that would be... Be all, all the right. better. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we just call that Kickstarter like help American buy a 3D printer so he can do things. <laughs> Maybe might, it'll might be related money. to Alice. <laughs> make a bit of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the 3D printer I have is all right, but it's um, it's an SLA machine, so it does sort of those like layer by layer. Um, and what would be fun to have is the, uh, the one of the resin machines because those um, you can do all kinds of different materials and yeah. So. One can dream. Uh, since money is an issue for Alice 3, cost-wise, would it be easier to make it in an entirely different style? 
like 2D action platformer one? <clears throat> yeah, well, I've asked this question um, before. Not it wasn't the most <clears throat> recent question, but I, you know, I've thought about that as well. Um, I think people have a certain expectation of what you know is contained in one of these games, and to reduce it down uh, to say something like a 2D platformer or a 3D platformer um, side on. Uh, I reckon people would be, fans would be a, a bit disappointed with that, so I, I'd want to be careful uh, trying to do, do that kind of thing. But I don't know, I mean, I guess that's a question for the fans, too. Um, would you accept a, you know, kind of Metroidvania-style yeah, Alice 3? Or would, or would you, you want this, but modern? Yeah. While you're busy answering that... Let's see another question. Are you going to do a clothing line slash? I think that's customs, custom clothing. Uh, yeah. So my girlfriend uh, Yin, she is a fashion designer, and uh, of course we have um, this business, uh, Mysterious. It's mysterious.americanmcgee.com, uh, where we sell various uh, fashion items. Like we've got purses, we've got wallets. Um, we do art prints, we do stuff like the art books, of course, um, you know, if I've got collectibles, like I had some copies of Alice, you know, that I'd signed and they, they were up there as well. Um, the, the thing with clothing, though, even though we think it's probably a good market, is you got to do all kinds of sizes, you know, small, medium, large, and then everything in between. Um, and I don't want to be in a position where we have to keep track of and make all this various sized stuff. Um, so we're, we're thinking about it, but we're trying to find a way to do it where it doesn't sort of require us to get into the business of making and holding on to tons and tons of different size stuff. Yeah, so. uh, some answers coming in about uh, what type of Alice 3 people would like. It seems to be mainly people would like this, yeah. but modern, updated, better. There's a yeah. few people who would like a, a 2D style platformer, but... It seems the 3D seems to be winning that particular question. Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, from my mind, I think it needs to be a console title. Um, <clears throat> it could be something that's a digital download. It doesn't have to be a retail. It can be, you know, in the in the digital store. Uh, and then, um, you know, it could be something, again, like I said, we, we would release uh, potentially episodically. Mm. Um, could probably also <clears throat> be put on Steam um, and released episodically. So, you know, that that, I think, is pretty much a given. Um, the question then becomes, you know, how do we get it built? Um, you know, one of the problems like with building a company in China is you can't just hire people and then fire them. Um, the labor laws here are more stringent and strict than almost any place in the world, um, especially when it comes to hiring and then uh, letting people go, uh, which means that like the idea maybe we would set up and build some stuff and then close down for a while and raise some more money and then set up we, just, we couldn't we couldn't get away with that so uh, we need to find a way maybe to outsource the bulk of that the but movie. then keep a core to team alive who are able to put together to episodes to as the funding comes in to do I so I may be responsible plenty of options to think dead. about yeah oh yeah if it became a possibility yeah yeah, I see people talking here about items we could sell on um, Mysterious. Like, I, I want to do socks and I want to do stockings because um, there's a lot of fans of that type of stuff out there. Um, you know, I see somebody saying, don't just make it regular t-shirts. I agree. I, we've <laughs> stayed away from that, even though we certainly would have the ability to do that. Um, so we'll see. I, you know, as soon as this Kickstarter is over, um, in addition to working on getting this Out of the Woods game made... Um, I'm also going to be spending a lot more time on trying to build up Mysterious uh, as a brand and with the stuff inside of it. Again, in the hopes that it will be there and help us to power doing the uh, the next Alice game uh, with some sort of online store component uh, making that possible. Okay. People are saying yay 200k. Oh, there it is. It's just switched over. Woo! We got it. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> um, why don't we take a break from the gameplay for a second and we can just look at what we've done. Yeah, look at that. Excellent. $200,000. High five. High five. And <laughs> high five to everyone out there who's helped us go over. Now, of course, while we're sitting here, someone's going to back out yeah. and it'll drop <laughs> back down again. That happened the other day. We were all excited that we were heading towards the first stretch goal. And then it looked like um, there was somebody who'd, 
who'd made uh, two some, fake Kickstarter accounts. Some fake person backed out to the tune of one thousand dollars. Yeah, terrible. So we yeah. went from like we went literally from being like fifty dollars away <laughs> from the stretch goal to suddenly being a thousand dollars away from the stretch goal. Um, but yeah, eh, it happens. What are you gonna do? And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We're now fifteen thousand beyond where they were when they. Uh, Kind of caused us a little trouble. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Doesn't matter. So that's good. It was annoying at the time. Well, that means that we're going to be able to do... Where's the card? Where's the thingy? So yeah, this is a, an example of, um, of what these collector cards look like. Um, you can see that they're, um, they're numbered here. Uh, and then there's a place where I can autograph uh, the card as well. So I will hand number and hand autograph every one of the cards and then we'll have it um, we'll have a design done up like this um, but with out of the woods artwork Let me put this over your head um, with out of the woods artwork and um, you know some sort of collector card nonsense back here and then so everyone who backed at a physical reward level will have one of these thrown into the package that arrives whether it be with your card game or your book or your card game and your book or whatever and um, there'll be the scarf in there as well. Yeah. So I think the package we're going to be sending out to backers is going to be pretty damn cool. Going to be awesome. The card box, um, for instance, is uh, a flip lid with a magnetic latch, and yep. then the inside is going to be plastic molded so that the cards and everything fit in there Sit really nicely. snugly. Um, the exterior of the box you can see on the uh, on the website uh, what that design is going to look like like this. Um, so the outside of the box is going to be made to look like a fairy tale book, mm -hmm. um, and then you can see here it's got all the nice foiling and it's going to have the UV uh, varnish on it. But when you open up the inside of the box, it's going to be gold foil. Um, the idea being that within these uh, grotty old fairy tales, um, there is some magic and some sort of key to uh, existence, <clears throat> and so there's a kind of Indiana Jones style glow <laughs> when you open up the box. And uh, I remember we were talking to the production company about how good the boxes can be. They gave us a big list of simple box, slightly better, bum, 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 all the way down. We just decided to go all out yeah. and say, just do the best one that you can possibly do well, for all backers. I think that's why, you know, if you looked at the total we were trying to raise early on, it might have looked kind of high. Um, in comparison to other card games, but that's because other card games would set these uh, additional levels of quality to the cards and the box as stretch goals, but we had it set up uh, from the beginning that way, and so that meant that we were hitting the highest level of quality um, from day one, and um, eh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be awesome. So yeah. yeah, scroll that back up so we can keep an eye on that. Oh, yeah, you want to see... I want to see that number see so that it doesn't number. drop down. <laughs> yeah, well, let's keep it growing. All right, let's go back <clears throat> to gameplay. A freely explorable wonderland would be awesome. We talked about this yeah, a little bit. Because Martin's favorite game is... Uh, yeah, I, I played the crap out of Horizon Zero Dawn. I would love that if there was like a wonderland version of that. So yeah, if EA is watching and want to drop 50 million... For us to uh, visualize that in gameplay form, that would be great. Uh, but yeah, that I uh, really love ah! that game. Don't don't jump off the side don't there. Jump lady. off that. No. <laughs> now is he gonna reappear and continue to annoy me? Who? These uh, the Davy Jones ghosty characters. You see, he's sort of oh. appearing and disappearing there. Yeah, yeah, he is. I, I think this. I'm trying to remember what the way was that you blew them, you killed them. I think maybe you reflect their bombs back to them, is that right? No, that didn't work. There's some secret to making them... Oh, you blow their bombs up in their hands. Uh, you know. Smash his face in. I, you know, I always thought the artwork on these guys was really cool. Um, I can't remember. I think Ken drew these. Uh, but they're very cool characters. <clears throat> What else do we have? I think I'm getting better at my own game. I'm sort it of might. I'm learning the tips, the tricks, you know. And <laughs> it might. You've certainly died less. I'm dying less. This is true. I think so. Yeah. Why am I going out here? This looks horrible and scary. 
There's like a whole series of things floating out there. Oh look, there's a sort of derelict piece of the Hatter's Domain floating out there. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. what I'm trying to get to over there? It seems like a really Hard bad idea. Say. I don't, I don't really know why I'm doing this. I feel like this is a mistake. What happened to other lands? Was it just a working title? It's finished! Ah, oh, no! <laughs> oh no, you died, or oh no, somebody asked that question Both! Again. Both! <laughs> oh no! Go look at the Kickstarter oh, page. No. All the information is up there. <laughs> Stop asking that question. Yes, other lands was an animation... And then you got two animations, and it's all finished. All backers got everything they uh, pledged for. Successful project. Check out the videos on YouTube. Yeah, but there's a small contingent of grumpy people who I don't even think they backed the project, um, <laughs> who continue to go online and complain about it being some sort of bait and switch like we yes. expected a game and we didn't get a game and it's like well it never said it was going to be a game it <laughs> always said from the beginning that it was going to be related to the film the film rights and that it was going to be uh you know animations as the rewards for those who helped us to get the uh, the option on the film rights um and I, you know i get it if, if you'd heard about the fact that i was doing something else related to alice um, and you hadn't really gone to check out the project, you might have assumed, ooh, he's making a new Alice. And then when you finally found out that it was animations, maybe you'd be disappointed. But um, that doesn't really, I think, create an excuse to then go around saying, well, I thought it was going to be a game, so you tricked me. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah, you tricked me because I didn't pay attention. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sure we'll continue to get this question. <laughs> Did we really use these props? Like, we doubled them up. So they're being used as lights here, whereas in earlier section of the game they're being used as breakables that contain teeth. That's mm. terrible. That's not nice at all. That's Who would do nice. that? Very tricky. <laughs> very, very tricky. There's some fishy residents here. Let's look at this up. guy. Yeah, he's very cool. Or she, I'm sorry. She, sorry ma'am, sorry. I didn't mean to misgender you. Yes, you assumed that fish's gender. I didn't mean to Damn assume it. that fish's gender. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. I wonder what her pronouns are. Flurm. Flur and blub. Yeah. Bloop, <laughs> bloop, and, uh, yeah. Noop, noop. Noop, noop. <laughs> <laughs> mister, and, or I'm sorry, noop, noop. Just no mister. Um, are we going to make a board game? From out of the woods or something like that. Yeah, for sure. But I think it's going to be out of the woods too um, that we're going to do that with, because uh, out of the woods, you know, already exists now um, to become a card game. And um, what we'd like to do is some months from now, then um, what's going on? What am I locked onto? Okay. Uh, we'd like to do another out of the woods, another Kickstarter and then make that another 10 different uh, fairy tales, another book, uh, another game, and then make that game a bit more complex. Yeah, that would be good. So we did go, we uh, went to like a board game night uh, a couple of weeks ago, up at a local Mexican restaurant, <laughs> and uh, yeah, board games with pieces and stuff, they, uh, they're quite fun, enjoyable, and they're very popular on Kickstarter as well. So. Uh, yeah, maybe for Out of the Woods 2. Yeah, what I'd like to do is a game that's got uh, sort of collectible pieces, um, like different characters, you know, say it was the Big Bad Wolf and Red Riding Hood, and then have them be, uh, you know, 3D models. And uh, if we had a book of 10 tales, and then each tale having, you know, sort of four characters, so now we've got 40 playable pieces, and then we come up with a game um, based around that, that'd be quite fun. Yep. Yeah. This is just a regular little uh, fish town, you know? Yeah. You know what would be cool is if I had a fish tank at home that had all this kind of art and stuff in it. <laughs> I bet people would, would expect that. They'd be like, oh, that makes sense. You've got the fish tank. I do have the fish tank, but it doesn't look anything like this. <laughs> uh, I'd be worried if I saw that my fish were wearing glasses. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, as their owner, do I have to pay for the glasses or to, like, send their little fishy kids to get their eyes inspected? Maybe. That doesn't seem like a good deal. Seems fair, though. I don't know. I mean, I feed them and I keep their water clean, so <laughs> that seems to be enough. 
Um, wasn't Alice supposed to swim in this level with a mermaid tail? Uh, yeah, she was, and um, we did have some some tests of that. Uh, did that not make it into the final game? Don't I think there's to be a swimming. But there's a section coming up where she does. I think she does swim in, in one of the sections coming up, doesn't she? Find out soon enough. Um. <clears throat> um. um. So, yes, apparently she was supposed to swim, but maybe she does soon. Uh, for some reason I thought that we ended up... Uh, I don't know, it's been too long. You got me. We're just gonna have to play and see. See what happens. You'd think I'd know the answer to that question, but I don't. <laughs> A new Kickstarter we can do. Alice Fish, Alice Fish Tank Ornaments. Yeah, I think that sounds cool. <laughs> we actually... Why not? Why not? There's more silly stuff in the world, for sure. I mean, some of the stuff... Why did all their heads just pop off? Um, what happened? Wasn't they just watching. suddenly all turned black. I was watching the chat. Did I do that? <laughs> that was really weird. If anybody oh. knows why they all just suddenly up and died, I would, I would love to hear your theory on that. Apparently she doesn't swim. She swims in the first one. She does, but we did have a swimming section in this. I remember playing it. I just don't remember if we... So... Well, if people are saying no, maybe it was we... cut. Yeah, it must have been cut. <clears throat> I do remember that, though. Hmm. I hear a pig snout around here somewhere. I, I saw one. There, there it is. is. Oh, they're saying uh, it may have been a timer that made all those dudes die. Oh, okay. Mm. Didn't see a timer Don't know. on the Oh, screen. right, because that those are the little sections that you're supposed to, like, rapidly complete in order to earn something something. Right, 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 right. Those are the sort of time challenge uh, areas. I remember that now. See how little I know about my own game? It's just, it's, <laughs> it's really, it's embarrassing. You have plenty of teeth now. You can upgrade the uh, pepper grinder. Can or I? Something to that effect. Okay, let's do it. Let's upgrade this. Is that it? I have, I have 800 still. Yeah. Should I upgrade this thing again? I do quite like the pepper grinder. I like these designs on the pepper grinder too. See, these things would be really cool. Like if we did another Kickstarter, about Alice, and then you were able to get little models of these things, like this big, you know, like if it was like a pepper grinder that was like this tall, like nicely modeled and painted, yeah. um, and then there's kind of variations on them, I would eat that up. Like, I think, <laughs> it wouldn't be able to do the Vorpal Blade. I, I think if, if it was, was very, big? yeah, yeah, if it was small. What we got in trouble for was <laughs> sending out something that was more or less kind of life-sized, and uh, then they rejected that and sent it, sent it. Well, actually, they didn't even send it back. They just kept it. <laughs> they were like, how dare you try to, um, how dare you try to uh, send something uh, out of China that looks like a knife. And um, yeah. Yeah, somewhere there was a customs agent with an awesome Vorpal Blade. That is exactly right. In his collection now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad about that. We had to return, I mean, obviously we returned people's money, um, but a lot of people that that happened to um, then said, "I don't want the money. I want, <laughs> I want the horrible blade." <laughs> you know, I don't know so, where it is anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of hard to return something that I don't have. Uh, do you agree with the critics when they talked about some of the unnecessary blank platforming in Madness Returns? Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, playing this um, this on live stream um, has been really eye-opening for me. I, I made the comment yesterday when I was um, when I was watching Halloween play on his live stream that um, it would be nice to have a sort of like Rick and Morty portal gun so that <laughs> once you'd spent two years working on a game you could then open a portal, uh, fuck off to like an alternate reality for two years of that reality's time and your time, you'd forget everything that you'd done, come back to where you'd made the game and maybe only one minute had passed, <laughs> and then play it. Because then you'd have the ability to be properly removed from your experience of having built it 
and you, your perspective would be much closer to that of the person who was going to play it. And of course, this is what beta testers are supposed to do for you, um, but I think even beta testers sort of get it wrong because they themselves are very hardcore players. Obviously, they, they play games for a living, um, so they're not going to give you, the designer, uh, you know, really a really good sense of what players uh, would get out of this. And, they, and they're not going to tell you stuff like it's too long um, as a game. But I would say, like, we knew that the game uh, was dragging on, and we asked EA for the time necessary to shorten it, to edit it down, um, and they said no. And, you know, don't be getting mad at them. I mean, we, you know, it's sort of like, it's sort of like, you know, asking the doctor for a few more weeks to live when he tells you you've got cancer. Like, some things just can't be changed, and that was one of those things that you just couldn't change. <clears throat> But yeah, I think the game would have been much improved if there was not so much running around space inside of it. I watched uh, the Zero Punctuation review yeah. of uh, this last night. Yeah, It's quite an old one, so he's not quite got his style there yet. It wasn't particularly funny or anything, but yeah, he laid into it. About yeah, he the, seemed... the massively open worlds because of the quadruple jump. Yeah, he seemed... I, you know, <clears throat> properly angry about some aspects of it, and um, you know that that also happened. Like when it came out, uh, Eurogamer gave it a fifty out of a hundred, which is a pretty, you know, abysmal score. And um, you know, then you had other sites that were giving it, you know, eighties and nineties, and so it was like, well, what is it? You know, there, it's it's it can't be a fifty and an eighty. So, you know, what's going on? But I. Um, I really think it depends on the type of gamer that that reviewer is, um, and that's of course one of the problems with reviewing things is, yeah. you know, you're not necessarily the audience um, that's going to end up playing the game. Obviously, the fans loved it, so take some of that with a grain of salt. Yeah. Although I did send a dead horse, a severed horse head to that guy's <laughs> house uh, for that. Um, what was the significance of the carpenter? in Alice? I think that was the question. It's scrolled past now. Well, I mean, the walrus and the carpenter are, you know, characters in the Alice books, and so including them here, um, you know, f just from a sort of content and having characters uh, type of perspective, obviously, was, was interesting and fun. They weren't in the first, in the first game. Um, but in terms of the narrative uh, meaning of, of that character, the idea that he's hiding out uh, underwater and he believes that he can escape the what's coming, he can escape the destruction of the train. Um, anything that you see within Wonderland is, is some representation of you know Alice's own psyche, and so the what's going on there? The Hatter, I mean the the Carpenter, you know, wanting to hide and to hide underwater. Uh, would be representative of some part of Alice's psyche saying to her, look, don't fight, uh, don't fight this, just, you know, hide out and maybe it'll go away. Um, but of course that's not how it works in life. If there are problems and we don't address them, um, they just sit and fester and eventually they will manifest themselves in our lives and the longer we wait, it's like a, it's like a toothache. You know, if you deal with the toothache right away, uh, chances are it's not going to be too big of an operation and it's not going to cost you very much money, but if you sit on a toothache and it grows and gets worse, um, now you're looking at a massive operation and lots of money spent. Um, so yeah, go fix your teeth. Go to the dentist. That's the point of the carpenter. Go to the dentist. Take care of your teeth. Really? <laughs> Take care of your teeth. Um... Just looking at the time, are we going to do an out of the woods hand? Yeah, we should. Uh, let's get through this, because I think there's a kind of a cool scene coming up here with the carpenter and the walrus. All right. And then uh, once we've got past that, we could... Um... All right. If you sit on a toothache, you get an abscess and die. Exactly. This is what killed so, uh, <laughs> many, many people um, back in ye olden days, before there were proper dentists. Lots of people died from toothache. Ah, mm. Alice. Mm. Is this the scene you, again, you meant? It is. Okay. 
Really? I didn't even know. My pregnant show is about to pop. It requires only a magic. So the animation on the carpenter is actually quite interesting because it's done by motion capture and the motion capture artist in this case was uh, one of the animators in the studio uh, his name was chris and he's an american guy and he was classically trained in ballet and so he had an amazing control of movement over his body and um so he had done up the He'd done up the model for this character, but he had in mind also who the character was. And he was able to body act this in such an amazing way. I remember when we first saw that animation come back and just how expressive he was as an animated character. We were all just really impressed. And um, yeah, Chris, Chris did some really incredible work on, on animation and motion capture. The show's tasty, but in a tasteful performers. You should leave now. What other card games were the biggest influences on the mechanics of Out of the Woods? Mainly was Uno. Um, I mean, we've played other stuff like Exploding Kittens and Cards mm -hmm. Against Humanity and other card games, but um, we were really just trying to keep it very simple when we built this. Um, yeah. People frequently just call it Dark Uno, yeah. which is fine. Yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with calling it that. It is kind of Uno with extra rules thrown in and with awesome art, so I don't think having it called Dark Uno is a particularly uh, critical thing. No, exactly. Nice. Um, speaking of, why don't we give the game a quick little play? Because there's a lot of people out there <clears throat> who back the campaign... Um, and have been asking for us to play the game. We did play in one of our in our first live stream. Actually, we Very played, first we played one. a match. And then we've also just recently had one of the backers slash fans um, start to implement the game on Tabletop Simulator, which you can get on Steam. And we have downloaded Tabletop Simulator. And I'm thinking that maybe the next time we do a live stream, we may use Tabletop Simulator to play the card game but today <clears throat> we're going to play the card game using the mock-up cards that we've done which is yeah. the way we did it last time around so we'll switch to this view switch to card cam it's also hand cam <laughs> this is our mock-up that we did of the game clearly doesn't have awesome art on it yet but it has all the details the houses around the side you've got red for blood um, brown for wolves so yeah, this is what we've been using, but of course, it's going to look much more amazing when finished. Yeah, and the other thing is, we <clears throat> do hope that over the next couple of months, while the artwork is being completed, uh, and before we go to manufacturing, that we will be playing uh, both on Tabletop Simulator and in real life. Martin and I have been taking the game and playing with other tabletop pl uh, gamers here in Shanghai, as he mentioned, um, and we will be working to tighten up and refine the rules also expand the number of cards that are in the deck to make it possible and fun for up to six or maybe even more players yeah. to join in because we know that like in its current card ratio and count the game's pretty much tuned for sort of a two to four player game um, but we we know that also by adding a few bits and pieces here and there we can actually make it a six five or six player game yeah. um, so we're going to be refining that kind of stuff and of course as we go through that process and say for instance the game is on tabletop simulator uh, we could then get your feedback and you can help us and then when the rules come out it'll all be in there very clear <coughs> and then variations on the rules um, as well yep yeah. so stop it shuffling Had a bit of a shuffle <laughs> So, uh, Martin is a shuffle fanatic. <laughs> but I'm not very good at it. But. Right, a two-player game. Uh, we're going to deal eight cards each. So, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll take that and put the top deck there. You can see. All right. I have my cards in hand here. We didn't actually go through the rules. Could do that now. Well, that's what we did last time. Did we? Yeah, remember? We, we actually looked at the website and kind of went through the rules. So let's do that really quick, because that kind of helps everyone who's watching to understand what's going on. So we will scroll down to the card game. Uh, it says here, obviously, it's kind of a dark twist on Uno and rawr. Um So what do we got? How to play? 
Take it away, Martin. Um, well, How do essentially, the, cards work? the rules there are basically two types of card. There are character cards and action cards. Uh, action cards, as you imagine, do all the good stuff: attacking, defending, make the game interesting. And character cards are essentially just for playing on top of matching houses. Apart from one specific rule, where if you can match every card in a story and play it all at once in a row, you get out of the woods. Instant win. Unless the other person can play a block. So character cards, they're kind of weak, but they do have one powerful rule. Uh, <clears throat> the action cards we have are here. Block pretty much does what it says. It uh, stops an attack on you. Reflect reflects an attack back at the person who gave it to you. Burden will allow you to give somebody an extra card from your hand. Attack makes the person pick two from the deck and miss a turn. Skip is unusual. It, it can't be defended against. It's quite powerful in that respect, but completely makes somebody miss a turn. And we have the wild two and four, which makes the other person pick two or four from the deck. As the aim of the game is to get rid of all your cards, being forced to have more is clearly a, a bad thing. <coughs> yeah, that's a <laughs> list of all of the stories and the characters. So have ten stories. Uh, each has four characters, and the stories are Little Mermaid, Bluebeard, Snow White, Cinderella, Red Riding Hood, Straw Pig, or the three three little pigs: Rapunzel, Jack and the Beanstalk, Pied Piper, and Hansel and Gretel. So that's um, kind of what the yeah. game is all about in its simplistic way. Those yeah. are the simple rules. Exactly. All right. So let's get back in here. Mm, right. Go to let's have a look at what we've got. Right. So usually when I'm starting up, I like to arrange all of my cards so that the action cards are in one hand or one side, and then I start arranging by story and house uh, in the hopes that maybe I'll complete a story and win the game That's that so. way. Ooh. Ooh. What do you... I'm not... Something oh, good? Oh, no, I know. It's all, it's all good. It's right. All good. I might have something good. Okay. Right. A dealer goes first. Go clockwise. Doesn't particularly matter in a two player game, but I'm going to play the sisters from Cinderella it's in the House of Castles. Ooh, cool. Um, Marcus Raven, who was the one who put the game on Tabletop Simulator, <coughs> asks Did we like that? Um, thing is, we've got Tabletop Simulator installed, um, but and I think we tried to friend you on Steam using the Spicy Horse account. So we he need... mentioned he's probably accepted that by okay, now. Okay, cool. So we need to. Um, so we check that after check that the stream. After the stream, I think next time around, yeah. Yeah. It says you are peeking at my cards. Well, I Martin. can see them from here. Well, don't look. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to look. There's many things you could do from there. You could so... kick me under the table. I didn't have a card to play, uh, so, so I drew you a picked. card. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sticking with the House of Castles, the Prince from Snow White. You know, it's funny too because in out of the woods, unlike in Uno, uh, one of the things is you do want to hide your cards from the other player. You don't want other players knowing how many cards you have <clears throat> in your hand. So um, I still don't have a card. I mean, I have cards I could play, but I don't want to play them. Um, so what I'm going to do probably is go ahead and... I do have a card I can play, which doesn't do much except annoy Martin. But I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll just draw pick a card. again? Yep, I'm going to draw again. All right. There's, I've got a strategy developing over here. All right. Well, I am going to play an action card. You can play action cards on top of anything, regardless of whether it makes sense or regardless of what the house is. You can just play them. So I am going to burden you. But I'm going to block that. Oh. Ha -ha. So I'm not going to burden you. Nope. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And the, uh, the block has changed the game back to the house of castles. Yep. And then it would be my turn now. Well, you play block, so it's my turn. Oh, right, right, right. Which I can't go. Pick a card. I also can't go. Pick a card. Okay. I can't go. Pick a card. Uh, I've got now <laughs> the stepmom from Cinderella, so I'm going to play that. Okay. I am going to make you Skip. miss a turn. Oh, boy. Um, and that changes it to the House of Blood. House of Blood. Which is kind of stupid of me, because I don't have anything in the House of Blood. Yeah. But then... 
you do things like that. You do. Yeah. Uh, I am going to pick. Yeah. All right. Well, I have a card in the House of Blood, so I'm going to play the Little Mermaid from the Little Mermaid. Okay. Eponymous? Is that how you say that word? She's the eponymous character of... Titular? Titular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Can pick you say again. titular on YouTube? I just did. Oh. <laughs> yep. I picked. Um... Boy. All right. I'm going to draw another card. There we go. I am going to attack you. I'm going to reflect that. Damn it. Yeah. I'm going to reflect your reflect. I'm going to block your God reflect. <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach you. It will teach me. Yeah. You just wasted a bunch of cards that were really useful to you, didn't you? Yes. All right. Oh, I can't go. <laughs> okay. So... Um, I'm going to draw a card here. Go ahead. Pick. Yep. Uh, I'm going to skip you. That changes it to the House of Blood. And then I'm going to play the Sea Witch from the Little Mermaid. Okay. The, the Beautiful Girl from Bluebeard. I like this. Somebody's just said Emo Uno. That's a very good... Emo Uno. That's a very good title for what this is. Emo Uno. Emo... It's not Emu, no. Yeah, alright, I need to draw a card. <laughs> um, I'm just going to rejiggle some of my cards around and pick. Yep, there's uh, Bluebeard from the story. Again, what is that word? Eponymous, I thought the word was. It may very well be. Yeah. <laughs> like Peter Pan is the eponymous character of <clears throat> the story Peter Pan. No? Anyway. Mm. Pick. Maybe somebody will tell us. They will. Is it eponymous or titular? I don't know. I don't think you can <laughs> say titular. Your on... Stop <laughs> looking at my cards. <laughs> terrible. Really terrible. Attack. You can't trust these Brits. That's what I. That's all I know. And I don't have anything, so I got to draw two cards, right? <laughs> One, two. All right. So it's the House of Wolves now, and the Woodsman from Red Riding Hood. Okay, I will play Red Riding or the Wolf from Red Riding Hood. I will play the Straw Pig from the Three Little Pigs. I'm going to burden you, um, unless you can stop that. No, you can burden me. I'm going to give you the Prince from Cinderella. Thank you. Take good care of him. I will. Yeah. So, uh, uh, my go. I think it's your turn. My turn. Yeah. Uh, since we're now in the House of Towers... Oh, look, we're dorks. It's both eponymous and titular. <clears throat> but I just don't think you can say titular on YouTube. <laughs> okay. House of Towers, the Beanstalk. All Jack right. Jack and the Beanstalk. I will do the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk. Uh-oh. No. I'm... What? I'm going to do something which you maybe shouldn't do. But we have now played two Jack and the Beanstalk cards in a row on the deck. I am going to play the third. Which potentially gives American the chance to complete the story if he has the fourth Jack and the Beanstalk card. I don't. Oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry to let you down. I don't. <clears throat> right. um, so Andrew was asking, do the action cards have to match, match the house being played? The answer is no. No. Nope. Um, actually, the action cards... I'm going to play Rapunzel, by the way, oh, while okay. I answer. The action cards uh, is... Um, it changes the house. It changes so the house. you actually use it. You know. Yeah. Uh, all of the action cards have a house assigned to them, apart from the wild cards, which then you can nominate the house. There you go. Uh, you pay. You play played Rapunzel, Rapunzel, from Rapunzel, House of Towers. I uh, will play Skip. Okay. Which was silly because I don't have anything in the House of Blood. Well, you so do do silly things. I get to pick. No one's Again. ever said that you don't do silly things. I have a silly streak. All right, go ahead. Wild two. Oh no! I'm gonna take two cards. One. And two. I will then say that the game has become. The House of Waifs. Okay. Not the House of Waifus, waifus as, as somebody was... once said. But if we do a game <coughs> where Jennifer does artwork for the cards, then we would probably have the House, a house of, waifus. of Waifus. Maybe. Because her art style seems to fit in with that pretty well. 
Um, yeah. So I played, you picked, you go. Okay, and what was the house? Uh, waifs. waifs. Right. I don't have anything from the house of waifs. Okay, you go for it. The Pied Piper's Pipe. Cool. So, Martin has just made a massive technical <laughs> error, uh, though it may not turn out that great for me, but we're going to find out. Uh, it turns out I have the Pied Piper, and I have the children from the Pied Piper, and I have the parents from the Pied Piper. So, I've just... So you have just finished the story. I just finished the story. And unless you could play a block... Um, I cannot play block. Well, that's it. No block. Martin lost. Didn't, I lost. I won the first you stream. You did win. You did win in the first stream. So that, is that your plan? You were collecting cards to finish a story. I was because that was what I said when I first started playing. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was. Yeah, I've got. I already had three of them. So I figured wow. I just would sit on those three cards until you yeah. made the mistake. Or so that was why actually when you were making me draw cards, I wasn't too bothered because I'm like, eventually I'm going to get this. <laughs> Either you're going to play it or I'm going to draw it. But I one way or another, I should have paid attention to I how many you. you were holding. I thought you were cheating and looking at my cards. You need to learn really how to help. You, you need to cheat better. <laughs> Alright, well, so that was it. Um, we had a good game there. How long was that? Five, five, six, seven minutes, something? I don't know. But that's kind of what we planned. You know, we, we find a game dependent on how many players between five to fifteen minutes. Sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little shorter. Yeah. We wanted quick bursts. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, there's a couple questions here. If you match a story, you went instantly. Yes, that's what I just did. Uh, somebody's asking, what is a waif? Um, a waif would be like if you uh, play Alice Madness Returns at the beginning of the game when she's walking around the streets of London and you see these kind of street urchins, um, those are waifs. Waifs are sort of wretched, dirty children. So, yeah. in fairy tales, obviously, we often have waifs. So, Hansel and Gretel would be waifs. Um, Red Riding Hood herself might be considered a waif. Um, so, that would be where that story, or that, that house came from. You know. Okay. Uh, so, they're saying <laughs> play it again. Play it again. Yeah. We can do that. So. If enough of you want to see another match, we can play another match, or I can also go back to playing some You could some play more. some Alice and I'll shuffle for a bit. All right. <laughs> yeah, Martin <laughs> shuffles a lot. It's very therapeutic. I don't know. It's, uh, maybe it's, it's kind of like sitting a... next to you. It gets a little bit annoying because it's just like shuffle, shuffle, <laughs> shuffle, shuffle. I mean, it's a bit much, but maybe, anyway, maybe it's like a fidget spinner. Maybe, maybe I get them now. Maybe you need a fidget spinner. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Well, idea. hopefully you enjoyed the look of Out of the Woods, the card game. Uh, it's good fun, especially when something unexpected happens and they beat you, or you can beat them in a sneaky way. Well, I, what I like are those interactions where you're sort of going back and forth with blocks and reflects, and those mm -hmm. tend to happen quite a lot. The other thing that happens, and it's it's quite a, you know, it's fun, but it's also, well, it goes kind of the point of the game, is if you were to complete that entire story, and then Martin turned around and played a block, yeah. uh, I would have to take picked, back picked up all three cards. All the cards, and then of course because that card I need is now in the deck under, under the block, block, I can't complete that story unless we play all the way through and then shuffle it back in. Um, yeah. So it, it can make you really angry, and uh, that's kind of the point of the moral lesson within Out of the Woods, is that bad things sometimes happen to good people. <laughs> and, and vice versa. And vice versa, yeah. <laughs> okay, so where are we? Well, we're still in the underwater domain. And now we've got to the point of the cannon crabs who are smoking cigars with one <laughs> claw and firing cannonballs at you with the other. So uh, as crabs, oh, as well, crabs, do. as crabs do. I think you have to reflect these guys' shots back at them, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's like it's probably it. Yep, there you go. And then once they're on their back, you hit them for yeah. massive damage. Exactly. <laughs> These guys have got really nice animation on them as well. I like I like the sequence where he's sort of hitting his um, he's hitting the cannon to uh, to reload it. Quite tough as well. They're like mini bosses. Um, they are pretty tough. You know, I don't like crab for this reason to eat because they're they're <laughs> such a pain in the butt. Uh, this is the same thing like shrimp. 
crab, um, anything that you've got to peel and eat, I'm not a big fan of. I like the taste, but it's just, I don't want to have to fight with my food in order to eat it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I remember you complaining about the shrimp in uh, Barbarian, where we went. Yeah. Um, what's the story behind the Psychonauts Easter egg? Um, there's not a story per se, other than I was a big fan of Psychonauts. Um, there are, I think, some obvious uh, parallels between the two stories, and in, in that, you know, both Alice, um, you know, bo both characters are going on uh, sort of um, psych, you know, psycho uh, adventures. Um, ah, shit. And, um,. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I sent a note to Tim Schaefer and said, hey, you know, and I, I also knew that he was a fan of, uh, of the Alice games, and so I asked him if we could uh, include the character as an Easter egg, and he said yes, and we actually got the two groups of lawyers um, at EA and at uh, Tim's company to, um, to say yes, so... Yeah, it just it happened. Had, it had to still all be lawyered up. It wasn't just like an agreement between chums. No, and and actually to that point, one of the things that I tried to do was get um, <clears throat> tried to get a big daddy from Bioshock uh, in there as well, and I and I wanted to put it in this underwater area, and um, it just didn't happen because the lawyers couldn't get their stuff together and agree on. On letting it happen because I, I wrote I also wrote to Ken Levine and I knew he was a big fan of Alice and I was a huge fan of Bioshock and I thought in these underwater sections it would be really cool to see a big daddy and um, and then the lawyers initially Ken said yes and then the lawyers came back and said no so that happens lawyers. yeah lawyers are annoying <laughs> really are um in out of the woods blocking an attack counts as a turn I think any time that you play a card counts as a turn. Uh, there is the mechanic, as you just saw, a little bit of back and forth we had. But if you can imagine a three or four player game, you can still continuously bounce back and forth between two people. As long as one is like, attack, reflect, reflect back, block. It can just keep going between two people until the turn is over, at which point you then continue to go around in the direction uh, of play. So yes, basically playing a card counts as a turn. Yeah. Well, and we, we know this ends up being one of those rules that um, needs to be very clearly uh, defined in the rule book, uh, especially the concept of any time you've played a card, you've, you've used a turn, so that when those sort of bouncing back and forth scenarios happen, it's clear whose turn it is next. Um, but that's where the instruction book will come in handy. Yeah. <clears throat> I seem to be lost. I've lost my way, Martin. In the there's game? These, well, everywhere. <laughs> but there's these sort of Easter Island heads that need to be jumped on. And then there's a jump pad here. And then I'm okay. arriving up here, and it's like, now what? That didn't do it. Shrink. What am I missing? Shrink. Oh, Maybe no. there's something hidden. I did shrink. Shrink again. I did. But look backwards. That oh way. boy, I did this already. I wasn't watching. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did do this already, though. But, right. I mean, I can see these platforms over here. <clears throat> um, oh, there it is. There's Yay. the thing that's hiding. It needs to be shot. But in three Boop. plus multiplayer games, who do you choose who you attack? Or does it go left like other games? We did ponder the idea of uh, letting the person choose who to attack, but we found that did start to get pretty complicated in knowing whose turn was next after, you know, a kind of a back and forth might have happened. Attack, block, reflect. Whose go is it next? Which way were we going? Like so we did just decide to keep it simple and it just goes in the direction of play. Yeah. But then the direction of play can be changed by using the reflector card. Reflect. So if you've been being attacked by Martin as the game plays this way around and you want revenge, uh, when a reflect card is played it'll come back around this way and then you can use all your stored up attack cards to thwart Martin. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 
responsible for my abortive career in chains. No joy. I need to know what love is. <laughs> this guy's great. Just now, it's kind of creepy. I need a dose of hide and seek. Find me. He is very creepy. Be quick about it. We yeah. can deal. Well, have you ever seen anyone speed run this game? Apparently, it's under two hours. I've heard that before. It's record. crazy. Very, very crazy. All right, we're going to go back to a <clears throat> uh, card game, I think, yeah? <clears throat> okay. All right. Who's going to win this one? Me. Gonna take some bets on this. <laughs> one, two, three, oh. four. Oh, what have you done? We didn't. Martin. Go. Martin didn't turn in his cards. Uh, I did. From the last, or he didn't grab my cards, and he didn't shuffle mine in there. So shuffle, shuffle. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. <clears throat> One. Somebody saying two. When Alice is in Wonderland, three, is she just unconscious? Four, is she having a seizure or something? Five, um, yeah. I mean, six, this is one of those those questions seven, again. Uh, it keeps coming eight, up, but it's sort of meant to be one of the mysteries in the game is just what's going on with her in London because obviously as you play through Madness Returns she's moving between physical locations <coughs> in London um, so there is a movement taking place but as to why and how um, I'd rather not say <laughs> did you get some shit cards there Martin? <laughs> I did oh no <laughs> good 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 I'm already on track to win again <sighs> what's wrong what's happened all right, so I'm arranging my cards again by story uh, and by, by action. action, and I've got some decent action cards, and I've got There's some... nothing going on here. Yeah, I've got a pretty... <clears throat> I, I'll admit I also have a pretty dead hand, so <laughs> let's, let's see how this goes. All right, get going. Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood. House of Wolves. I will play the wolf from <laughs> The Three Little Pigs. I will play the wooden pig from the Three Little Pigs. I'm going to do... Uh-oh. This could just end very quickly. <laughs> There's the straw pig from the Three Little Pigs. No. No, I'll okay. skip. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so now we all know that that story is dead. If that anybody is... gets the Three Little Pigs, there's no point in trying to hold on to it for yep. any sneaky reason. Exactly. Yeah, it is one of the things you want to try to keep track of what's going on with the cards that are being dealt because it'll give you a sense of whether or not there is a story to be collected and played. Nope, I, I couldn't go. I picked. Alright, well I'm going to burden you unless you're going to block that. I am not going, going to, to block that. And I'm going to burden you with the Pied Piper from the House of Waifs. Okay. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking, what is our favorite Chinese dish? Hong Sha Ro. That's pretty good stuff. Mm. Mm. So he didn't even have to think about and that. And that's, look, he spoke Chinese. <laughs> Woohoo, Martin! Oh, yeah, I know the name of my favorite <laughs> dish. Shock. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's kind of, it's pork in sauce, but it's got all the fat on it. But the fat is, it like dissolves in your mouth. It's, mm. it's yummy. lovely. Very yummy. I could eat that forever. Yeah. You <clears> would <throat> die, though. Yes. You know, fat overdose. Um, you burdened me. Uh, I gave you a card, and now anything. it's your turn. Okay. And that, of course, changed it to the House of Towers. House of Towers. And now I'm going to play Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk. Can't go. God damn. It's got a handful okay. of cards. Um, I'm going to continue in the House of Towers with the Prince from Rapunzel. I'm going to skip you. All right. And now we're in the House of Blood. Go with the Dead Wives. Cool. Bluebeard. Um, I'm going to wild to you. <gasps> no, you're not. But that takes us to the House of Castles. The yes. Boss. Okay. And is it my turn now? It is your turn. Wow, because I'm on my last card. What? Which is the House of Castles, and you <laughs> lost again. Wow, he wasn't paying attention to my cards I... that time. <laughs> I have got one. six <laughs> cards in my yeah, hands. That was a good one. That was very fast. I think that was the fastest <sighs> game we've ever played. Wow. Really, really well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is why you're supposed to keep a close eye on the other person. On the other person. If you've Even known, if, if you can't see the cards, you still known. want to know how many they've got in their hands. I can't believe it was that fast. It was pretty fast. Maybe you shuffle again. We'll play one more time. Uh, I was building up for the Cinderella story. Nah, yeah, you can't be building. Well, so I mean, that changed my strategy though, because I had such a crap <laughs> hand that I thought, right, I'm not going to uh, bother trying to build anything here. And then it just it just became about getting rid of cards as fast as possible. Ah, uh, damn it, two nil. 
That's all right, Martin. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, never mind. They'll forgive you. <laughs> uh, there is an Americanized Chinese restaurant in Shanghai there called is the Fortune, Fortune Cookie. Cookie. Yes, because Fortune Cookies are an American invention, not a Chinese invention. So it's literally the only place in China where you can go to have Chinese food and get... <clears throat> A fortune cookie with your food um, and I've had the food from there before and if you like Americanized Chinese food uh, you will like the fortune cookie it's very sweet um, and it's got all the kind of like stuff that we know like the general Jow's chicken and it's got the uh, lemon pork and stuff like that which typically you don't find uh, those dishes on the menu at uh, tr you know traditional like normal Chinese restaurants where is that fortune cookie I don't know where it is. I just always order it as a takeout. And you know what's funny is, again, like when you order Chinese food to go in the U.S. or I assume in the U.K., you get it in those little white boxes with like the little red drawing. We don't get that. We just usually get that the plastic Tupperware thing. Ah, okay. Well, in the <clears> states, like when I lived in San Francisco or I lived in Los Angeles, you'd order Chinese food and everything would come in these little white cardboardy boxes. With I've seen the, the movies. Exactly. So that's a thing. And then you know, of course, you would get your chopsticks and your fortune cookie. Um, and these guys deliver with all that same setup so it literally it's like it's like back home Chinese food it's quite okay. uh, yeah it's quite good <laughs> but there's really zero reason to eat that given that <laughs> that the food here um, the food here is absolutely fantastic and and the thing is like you don't realize it until you live in China but um, Chinese food is as varied um, as having food from like multiple different countries uh, it's, you know, different regions of China make different styles of food. So Sichuan food or Dongbei food or, no, oh, come on, <laughs> or Shanghainese food or, um, you know, just depends on where in China you are, how they flavor and what kind of uh, meats and, and vegetables they use. Um, and so the variety is absolutely incredible. You could eat Chinese food every day for weeks and not eat <laughs> the same thing twice. Uh, it's quite good. Yeah, one of the one of the big benefits to living in uh, in China, really. <clears throat> yep, all the wolves probably know that if I'm delicious now after losing two nil. Yeah. Yes, you've been eaten by the wolves <laughs> twice. Twice. <laughs> but British food is just not my favorite kind of food. If I were yeah. the wolves, I wouldn't eat you. I'm technically not British food. I'm just British. But that would make you British food. Yeah. And again, in all the Grimm's fairy tales, they were constantly eating British people and German people. And grinding and our bones to make their bread. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How goes the shuffling over there, Martin? It's good. It's Are good you shuffling. done? Yeah. Please be done. Do you not like it? No, it's annoying. <coughs> all right. You can... You, it is possible to shuffle too much. Okay. Yes. All right. Back to the <coughs> card game. Right. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight. So Chris Froz is asking about asset flipping scandals <coughs> on Steam. And uh, yeah, we, we know about that. Uh, in fact, you know, this was sort of one, one of those things when we had games on Steam um, that people, they would, they would try to accuse us of doing stuff like that. They'd come and see one of our games and be like, these assets look like the assets from some other game. Um, this is asset flipping. This is a cash grab. Um, people on Steam can be really sensitive. Um, they so, can be very passionate yeah. about things. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we, yeah, we've heard about it. Uh, we've never really been directly affected by it or involved with it, but, um, yeah. Oh. How's your hand? My hand is good. My hand is Here's terrible. My hand. There you go. <clears throat> and um, this is, may very well be 3 0. Awesome. <sighs> right. The Brothers from Bluebeard, House All of Blood. Right. Um, <coughs> I will do Bluebeard. Or no, I'm sorry, the beautiful girl from Bluebeard. Maybe you've got the other two cards. You could just end it now. <laughs> that would be the fastest game ever, but I don't. Look, so. someone believes in you. A person named Faith has Ooh. believes in you. Come I'll on, I'll try. You can do it. I'll try. The Prince from The Little Mermaid. Okay. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to draw a card. Okay. Okay. So am I. Oh, man. Okay, well, I know this means that you don't have the rest of that story, so I'm just going <laughs> to go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to... The Little Mermaid from The Little Mermaid. And the Dead Wives from Bluebeard. Well, I'm going to keep going with 
things from The Little Mermaid? The Sea Witch. Someone's asking, what is our favorite Rick and Morty episode? Um, I was... I was. I mean, it, it has to be Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick? It really is Possibly, no. yes. It's, it's an instant classic. I... I was laughing so hard during that episode. <laughs> and especially when he made the little like battery powered laser gun and started blowing holes in the bad guys. I it was just I had the whole tongue using his tongue to kind of manipulate the brain of the roach. It was like, oh my god. Yeah. Cause I mean of course you go into that thinking like, what could they possibly do here? And then they go completely bonkers. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I picked. <clears throat> okay, and then what happened? Nothing then it's you your just turn. took a, okay. Well, I'm going yeah. to attack you. <clears throat> okay so I have to pick two and miss a turn yes I always liked interdimensional TV that on Rick and Morty good. both of them that was a really good one <coughs> yeah. uh, I, that's you've you've done your thing okay so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna play a card from the house of wolves the brick pig oh, it's got a handful of nothing no oh, sorry about that <sighs> wild <clears throat> two well I'm gonna reflect that <laughs> Why? Oh no, Martin! What's going on? He's got to take two. One, two, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards in my hand. Yeah, sorry, man. Now this doesn't really make any sense, but I'm gonna block. Uh, it's gonna change us to the House of Castles. Maybe that that'll give Martin a chance to play a card. Can stepmom from Cinderella. Cool. Um, it doesn't really, again, make much sense. I'm going to play a block. But in this case, it's actually going to make Martin take that card back. It does. Yeah. I have to pick that back up. You have to pick that back up. And now it's your turn again, which I guess means you could just... I could just put it back <laughs> down again because it, again. it is the House of Castles. It is the House of Castles. I, I think you've only got one card left. I don't know. I might. I'm not... I'm holding my card very <clears throat> closely here. Cards, I should say. Cards. Sorry, not card. Cards, I should say. Oh... It's, well, why not? I'll, I'll give it a try. Wild four. And I'm going to reflect that back All to right. you. <laughs> yeah, win again! Woo, that, that was, was good. I, that was I had no actions. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> nothing I had nothing I could I have had done. I had all actions. <laughs> that was a terrible hand you dealt to me. I had all <sighs> actions, so. All right. Three nil. That's it. Hey. Sorry, man. Much like life, sometimes you get kicked in the nuts. Sometimes you do. <clears throat> it's all right. But that's the point of the game. Yeah. Um, do we have any, because we're coming up on like our 10 minutes until the end of the stream mark, so any other questions, comments, uh, insults, feedback, you name it. Just having a look now. Friendships will be ruined by Emo Uno tonight. Emo Uno. <laughs> That's really good. I hope whoever came up with that doesn't mind if we use that in our uh, in our marketing. <laughs> Do you like Uno? Then you'll love Emo Uno. <laughs> That's a really good one. Very, very funny. Very appropriate. Eh. Autoerotic Assimilation is Fallen Angel's favorite episode. That was the one the, with, with uh, Unity. dropping loads. Wasn't that the... It was the Unity one where she was absorbing minds. Oh, oh. Okay. And Rick went on a party bender. And... Right, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> what was the one with the uh, the sex robot that Morty impregnated? And then it, and then he had a that child. Was, and... That was raising Gazorpazorp. Oh, okay. Because that, actually... that one was actually really, really fun. Weirdly. I don't like that one as much. No? No, if I'm going back and watching them, I kind of avoid that one a lot. That's weird, because yeah, I thought there were some why. parts where, like, especially the, the beginning, where, like, Morty's up in his room, obviously, having his way <laughs> with, the, with the robot, and then, uh, you know, they're like, well, this isn't normal, but then, you know, he goes back upstairs, and then he's like, Grandpa, come upstairs, and she <laughs> says, well, if they start making noises again uh, together, can we please go up there and make them stop? You know, it's like, yeah. Um, this has been asked a little bit. What happened to the early version of the game where Alice was chased by the police in London? Who asked that? Grayson Histrol? Alright. We're, um... Where, and the White Rabbit would have helped her escape. Yeah, Why was well, that removed? Is that the demo question again? That's the again? demo question again. Right. Yeah, so, um, that was the game demo. It was built for EA, and, <clears throat> uh... 
It no. was never meant for public consumption. I don't have a copy of it, so you're just going to have to... Uh, <laughs> it's gone forever. Exactly. Sorry to say. Any love for the Cronenbergs episode? Rick Potion number nine. I, I, ah, no! I do, like, I do like a Cronenberg. I thought the Cronenbergs <laughs> were very funny. And didn't they make reference to that reality again in a recent episode? They did. They mentioned, they mentioned that. Yeah, that was really uh, cute. And they went back there for a bit. That's right. Yeah. They did. They end up going back to that world again. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's a good episode, that one. Yeah. I think it's either Dan or Justin's favorite episode as well, I seem to remember them saying. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Why can't I quadruple jump? I don't know. I, I just suck. It could be that. I suck at my own game. This is terrible. Now, oh uh, no, I've gone all the way back to the start. Ugh. I think this is an indication that... The time, the time, the time is nearly up. Time is nearly up. Bro. Yeah, Let's just keep repeated going. unnecessary deaths means that it's time, time for lunch. <laughs> what are we having for lunch? Uh, I don't know. We're gonna have to go outside. Mm. What was it doing outside when you came over? It was brightening up. Yeah. It was a bit rainy this morning, but I think it was getting better. All right. Well. Total, total recall. Uh, the Memory Parasites. That is one of my favorite episodes. Oh, that was a good one, too. Yeah. The, definitely in my top three, probably. Uh, <clears throat> so, any other Alice questions? Any other <laughs> card game questions? Any other... Um... Will you ever make an... Will you, will you ever make another sci-fi FPS game? Or as far as you're concerned, you've had enough of that. Uh, no, I actually think it would be really fun to do um, basically a you know a remake of uh, some of these games that I was previously involved. I, I can't I can't do it. <laughs> I, I just can't do it. Um, you guys are gonna have to excuse me. I don't want to continue to die there. I'm clearly doing something wrong. Uh, we are. What? Um, I would like to do something 3D FPS y. I've been seeing that there's a whole community of people out there uh, who are going to, who are doing, you know, uh, old school maps for Quake and Doom. And I think that's really interesting. And <coughs> so um, I think it'd be fun to put a project like that together. And especially, I've, you know, thought like a, a kind of gothic black lava world uh, with rocket launchers and machine guns. And who knows? Mm -hmm. So maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Um, what's the plan for translating Out of the Woods? It's a stretch goal at 210,000. Is that right? I think so. Um, <coughs> where's the stretch goals there? Oh yeah, 210. Yeah. We could, we could, we could get there. Yeah. Yeah, we still got three days to go and we've been seeing <coughs> something like five, six, seven thousand dollars plus per day. We may very well get there. So we may get there. And then if that happens, what happens? It's going to be a digital translation, will be hosted on Americans' websites, so you could just read the instructions there or download them as PDF and print them out. Logistically speaking... Someone was <clears> suggesting <throat> that we could... I saw a comment, and the guy, I think he made kind of an okay point, and that was um, when we put together the backer kit, assuming mm -hmm. that we hit that stretch goal, when uh, you go and answer your backer kit stuff, you could actually select which copy of the instructions you would like inserted with your game. Um, so we will look into that because it would just be a piece of paper on which the instructions are printed. But I assume when the card game comes from the factory, it's going to be all boxed up and ready. Yeah, and it's yeah. going to require more opening no, 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 and no, no, picking. No, no. This would just be putting the instructions <coughs> printed on paper in there with the card game. Oh, into the actual shipping box. Yeah, exactly. Not the, right, okay. Exactly. Hmm. Uh, and then we have Aku asking, uh, why not translating the cards? Um, if you actually look at the backer counts uh, for non-English speaking countries, so say France, um, what's the number two? Uh, what, what's the first non-English speaking country with a large backer base? I think it's it might be Germany, Germany. Germany and then France. But, I mean, you're looking at a total of something like 50 people in total from France that have backed the project. And so the price to produce the cards or the books uh, in such small numbers is really astronomical. Uh, you know, 
production costs only start to scale down to reasonable amounts when you're printing thousands of things. And so to try to do, say, a French only or a French language version of like the book or the card game, we would need literally thousands of French backers in order to justify making a print run of, say, a thousand, uh, you know, copies of the game. Yeah. Uh, and so in lieu of that, what we're going to do is we'll hire someone to do the translations to French, Italian, German, and Spanish. And then we will hire Alex, our uh, graphic designer, to do a layout on a really nice <laughs> instruction sheet. And then that could be folded up and sent off with the rewards with the card games when they go out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is probably a good time to mention. We haven't mentioned it yet. But if you did miss most of the stream, Ray... It will be available for watching later. Mm. After the stream's over, it will be processed by YouTube and go up as a video you can watch. So, yeah, not to worry. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, somebody with an upside down mm -hmm. name is asking that they're currently learning how to make their own game. Do I have any advice? Um, yeah, the advice for that is to just keep making stuff and force yourself to make stuff until it's complete. Um, don't make stuff and then kind of stop halfway through, but actually train yourself to make little demo games from start concept through development into completion, even if uh, you're not necessarily publishing them. Um, but let's say you're using Unity 3D or using the Unreal technology. Um, you, know, you can get that stuff either for free or via student licenses. And the suggestion there is just keep building um, because building and completing stuff is the thing that you want to teach yourself. And that's the thing that I think is most valuable when you are teaching yourself. Okay. Mm. Any more questions? How long um, have we got? A few more minutes. Aku is asking if there's a Russian company that does localization distribution. Can we work with them? Um, Maybe, but you know, this is a very technical aspect of the project that probably isn't appropriate for discussing on the chat uh, during this stream. So you could always email us if you want to make a connection there. But you know, keep in mind, um, we've already got our distribution partner selected. We've already got our factory for production of the cards and the books and the prints selected. Um, so changing that stuff at this point, uh, we wouldn't want to do unless we had a really, really good reason for that. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, is that are you just asking the demo question again? <laughs> uh, that That's is the same question. person asking why was the white rabbit removed from Alice Minus Turner's game? Uh, you know these questions about like why stuff was removed or why was something in the demo that wasn't in the final game or <clears> there's <throat> really not like some answer I can give you to these things that's gonna. Well, I'm not really sure what it is you're looking for. I don't know what the people <laughs> who ask these questions are looking for. It's sort of like when you're making a film, sometimes a scene will be edited out, um, either to make the film you know, sort of run faster and feel tighter, um, or maybe there was a scene written in a script that ultimately doesn't get shot, uh, that you know, the director or the producers decided was too costly uh, for them to include in the final uh, production or maybe they just ran out of time so generally that's the case it's sort of like there was stuff that we were planning to do earlier on uh, some of that stuff didn't make it into the final game and there could be a variety of reasons and the truth is I don't remember every single detail about every single thing that we thought we might do and then maybe later decided not to do for cost reasons time reasons a myriad of other reasons so uh, yeah I don't know I would say don't worry about it. The game is <laughs> the game is what the game is. Um, there's no real mysteries or conspiracies going on there. So, um, <clears throat> when when are you making a nightmare themed Candy Crush? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I want to stay away from mobile games for a while. We we had a run with mobile games for the last five. Well, you know, a year ago we took, took the studio down, but uh, for the five years prior. We had been working on mobile development of free-to-play games, and um, I don't know, I'm just, you know, I'm much more interested in making these physical things, I'm much more interested in interacting with the physical things, interacting with the actual audience in this fashion. Um, I'm, I'm okay if I don't make another mobile game for a while. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's... 
two hours. That is two hours. And my throat is playing up. <coughs> well, that Sorry. Means it's a good time for us to call it a day. Um, so, a couple last points. We still have three days to go with the campaign. We now uh, have our third stretch goal in sight, and that would be the translation. And we need to raise another, what, 10,000? Okay. 9,400. Okay, so roughly, <laughs> almost $10,000 in order to unlock the third stretch goal. Um, three days, and if you don't back before the three days are up, you're going to miss your chance to get the collector card and the scarf and the translated stuff, I guess. Well, not the translated stuff, but the collector card and the scarf. Um, before the end of this, this campaign, I guess you and I are probably going to do at least one more stream. And I, so. I will probably keep doing some streams, and you're welcome to join. Um, of Madness Returns until we finish that, and then maybe we could move on to some other games that I've worked with. Yeah. Yeah. People seem to be thoroughly enjoying the streams. Cool. Well, we've been having fun too, so thank you so much for joining us, uh, for watching <coughs> me fail miserably at my own game and not laughing too much <coughs> at me while that's happening. But winning at Out of the Woods. This is true. You can't lose <laughs> at everything. you got to win at something. Maybe yeah. you should play next time. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, so, I think that's about it. Thanks uh, for joining us. We will send out an invite for the next stream. Uh, <coughs> feel free to leave comments for improvements to this stuff or suggestions in the comments below. Um, what does everybody always ends these videos with? Like, make sure to subscribe, like, yeah. and hit the little dingy bell button. We, sh we should have something to point at. Yeah. Like, hit the subscribe, Twitter. Yeah, we're, not, we're not that professional. Not this yet. Week. Not yet. <laughs> that's it. See you okay. guys uh, next time. Bye-bye.